A St. Louis organization is currently working on a project called Our Town. Details next on City Corner. I'm Steve Potter and welcome to City Corner and I'd like to int introduce you to our guest today. Jasmine Aubur is the Executive Director of uh, the Center of Architecture and Design St. Louis, the Creative Exchange Lab or mm -hmm. CEL or CEL. Correct. Jasmine, yes. welcome. Uh, you are involved in a, uh, you're a nonprofit organization and you're involved in a project right now in East St. Louis, but before we get to that, could you explain a little bit about um, CEL and what you do? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, CEL is a um, uh, Center for Architecture and Design. Why a Center for Architecture and Design? Because uh, we need to bring the design professional closer to the general public and vice versa. So um, CEL happened out of the realization that th there is a lack of communication, uh, access accessibility of the design professional, planners, architects, landscape architects. Uh, after all, we're talking about multi-million dollar projects. And um, the center and its gallery space um, acts as that bridge. Uh -huh. So is, is your organization all about just making um, our communities more attractive places? Is that what it is? Uh, yeah, thank you for... Um, the cell has another part to it. So one part is the gallery or uh, the storefront, if you like. It's the lectures, the workshops. Um, you know, each exhibit shows an architect's, a developer's projects. But then there is the annex, which is the city lab, um, if you like, um, which, uh, which acts as a, also a center for social innovation. It's a think tank. It's what, what um, what it's really about to uh, provide um, design services or, or make the design services more accessible to underserved communities. Um, it's very expensive to hire an architect, a planner, a landscape architect. So you could say it's an experiment to uh, connect a few dots that urgently need connecting. Um, so this is really trying to partner with um, with communities directly. Uh -huh. uh, actually, the, the NEA project, um, uh, Our Town, is a good example. Like, uh, Let me stop there works. since you mentioned it. You recently received a grant from the National Endowment for the mm -hmm. Arts, mm -hmm. and the project we referred to earlier you call Our Town, and it's mm -hmm. what you're doing in East St. Louis now. That's right. Uh -huh. uh, Our Town um, uh, is, uh, as mentioned, a good example of what comes out of the City Lab. Uh, we um, saw potential um, in East St. Louis after realizing um, that within five neighborhoods, you have um, so many legends that are um, international, glob global uh, figures that people know and celebrate. Um, so that we realized there is potential to um, invest in these cultural assets. When you talk about legends, people like Miles Davis, Catherine mm -hmm, Dunham. Mm -hmm, yes. Um, so um, the, I, I don't know, um, can we see the next slide? Yes, uh, we, have, we have a lot of images to look at today yeah. that you brought along. Thank you. Yes, um, they, they really help to um, build a, a more complete picture. So um, accidentally, there it is, Miles Davis. Uh -huh. uh, Miles Davis was born in Alton, but actually um, uh, grew up in East St. Louis. And um, um, his house is uh, a boarded up house. Uh, recently, a nonprofit organization um, got into raising fund funding and actually creating ed an educational center there and a museum. I think they're in the process of sort of rehabbing the house right now, aren't they? They are. Yeah. They are. And uh, yes, this, this image shows, um, I, I hadn't seen it. I went in and they had just started to uh, got it. So, but but as, a, as a European who 
lives here, uh, here for some times, um, to be in this space is it, it's, it's indescribable. Um, I think a lot more people would come from um, all over and make this into a destination to visit House of Miles Davis, Catherine Donner Museum, um, Jackie Joyner, Kersey, and um, uh, Ike Turner and Tina Turner's house, then they would uh, f know about Era Serena and the bridge. Uh -huh. In fact, I think it's a very good opportunity to um, connect, or a very good way to connect St. Louis to East St. Louis. Uh -huh. And um, there she is. We, uh, Catherine Dunham um, is just a legend and the mother of modern dance in America and an activist and anthropologist. Um, what is, um, uh, this is the little museum she uh, uh, created in East St. Louis, which is absolutely a treasure for the community. Um, so what we did after um, seeing this potential, we um, applied, we put the proposal to the National Endowment for the Arts um, based on creating a, a, a cultural asset mapping. And um, actually we have gone much further than that in, into the project. It's about um, creating a path between these um, um, buildings, if you like, the physical spaces, and making use of the open spaces. There are a few slides um, that that show better uh, what we have come up with. But what our primary partner um, in, in this project is Harris Stowe University. So yeah, there you go. The dots um, that you see are actually uh, showing where each of the physical space is that I mentioned, House of Miles Davis, uh, Catherine Dunham Museum, um, Jackie Joyner, Kersey, and uh, there is also a site uh, where the, uh, there was the uh, race riots. And um, the next year, uh, there is a commission now in East St. Louis that um, is going to commemorate next year. Um, so that's a, a historic site, you could say. So the map we're looking at right here. So what you're doing, um, it's more than just redeveloping these specific sites. It's it, because it affects the neighborhood as well, doesn't it? Well. Um, absolutely. It's, um, it's high time we created a new narrative for East St. Louis based on facts, truth, uh, instead of half glass empty, actually look at all the positive things about East St. Louis and, and its incredible potential as a, as a cultural corridor, as a, um, uh, a reason for many people from all over the world, all over the country, to make it into a destination. Uh -huh. Now, you're an architect by training, I think. I am. I'm yeah. an architect by training, an urbanist, and uh, a researcher. Well, what makes you want to work on a project like this? You could be maybe working for some really rich people, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, building a big high rise in a fancy neighborhood or something. Um, I have been, I come from the private sector and I have worked uh, um, with many of such people on many such projects um, in London and Frankfurt and San Francisco. However, I got very interested how um, design, there's a huge um, gap between who can use the potential and, and power of design uh, for positive change. Uh, it's a huge problem because projects that, hap that happen tend to be developer driven. And there is pretty much nothing else. <laughs> uh -huh. So um, that, th that needs to change because um, to, to really um, create an economic development, you need uh, to make the neighborhoods beautiful, uh, bring out their true potential, and you can um, only do that by re-envisioning re it with the community itself. Right. You know, I was trying to uh, think of a way to help our uh, viewers maybe understand it on this side of the river. And uh, I know you're not involved in this project, but maybe you can relate to it. What they did a year or two ago on Natural Bridge Road, mm -hmm. up around the University of Missouri and Normandy in that area, they totally changed the streetscape. I think they you know, went from four lanes to two, did some roundabouts, <laughs> and 
you know, street lighting, and, and it, it really changes the whole atmosphere of the neighborhood. Uh, there you go. Just uh, a few um, uh, loving care um, in landscaping, um, it makes a huge difference. Uh, once a place has um, been rethought, re envisioned, you just like to go to beautiful places. Um, and um, it, it really doesn't take much. It just takes a little bit of effort, and we can really transform the energy. Of Is it exciting for you to work in a place like East St. Louis because, um, uh, you know, it's in really rough shape and it has nowhere <laughs> to go but up? But that's sort of like a blank canvas for an artist, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It, it, I guess um, that, that's one way of putting it. I really see nothing but potential when I look around. Um, I'm always amazed when people say there is no work because all I see is work everywhere. Um, and potential, it's like um, popcorn. <laughs> it's like constantly thinking about what this could be or what, what, what hasn't been done. And a lot of, a lot of um, these spaces or uh, communities are more deserving of what's really happening to them. It, we're not alone. Cell doesn't work alone. We work in partnership. Um, you cannot do any of this without uh, the right partners and inviting more partners. Um, and all of this is held by the community itself. So we really are like a pen helping the community to re-envision itself. Instead of waiting somebody from the, the, the mayor's office to be allocated to do this project. Um, so it's kind of, I guess, a bottom-up approach. Uh -huh. And if, if you found people there to be very excited about what you're doing and the potential? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the people who are there, they know what's great about their community. And um, they are telling us, and we're just mapping it out, it was identifying accidentally, um, uh, you know, as somebody who, who knows Miles Davis or fascinated by Miles Davis. When I heard how so Miles Davis was here, I was just like, you, you gotta be kidding me. So um, yes, that led to actually learning so much more um, about how fascinating, just the Kaokia uh, mounds, mm -hmm. this whole area is, is just packed with these gems of um, historic um, assets. Why hasn't it happened before? Good question, <laughs> <laughs> because it's right there. And um, the community is just really um, sweet and uh, very, very um, engaged, very active. And um, if we all um, help each other, I think we can make amazing things happen. All right, we're gonna take a little break and come back and pick up on this. We're talking about Our Town, which is a project in East St. Louis from the Center of Architecture and design, and we'll be back in just a couple of moments. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. I'm Steve Potter. Welcome back to City Corner. Uh, today uh, we are talking with um, Jennifer Aber, or Jasmine Aber, excuse me for changing your name. <laughs> Jasmine Aber. She's the executive director and the founder of CEL Center for of Architecture and Design St. Louis. 
and it's a nonprofit organization that's right now working on a project called Our Town, mm -hmm. which is uh, redeveloping some sites in East St. Louis. And Jasmine, we were talking about that, and uh, during the break, you made an interesting uh, analogy or comparison I'd like you to talk about. You kind of compared what you're doing in East St. Louis with redeveloping these sites in this geographical location to a place like Forest Park and the attractions it has. Mm -hmm. It kind of explain that. Sure. Um, before I just go to that, I want to make sure this is a proposal um, we're, we're putting out there with the help, uh, with, uh, with the community together. Um, hopefully it will attract other um, developers, politicians, investors, to, to, investors uh -huh. to see the, the incredible potential there. So it's not a development project. It's okay. a proposal um, that was possible to happen because of the NEA, National Endowment for the Arts Award we got. Um, just making sure. <laughs> so the, the way I can uh, best uh, uh, explain the concept we've come up with, we're not actually working on the individual buildings, the Catch and Dunham Museum. There are nonprofit organizations in their own right mm -hmm. doing that job. But what we saw, this creative uh, corridor or the cultural campus can be compared to um, the how Forest Park works. So you have the art museum, you have the history museum, you've got the jewel box, and then the amazing park through many paths you get connected to um, all these um, cultural in institutions. You go there, you have a great time with your family, you uh, walk the park. So the proposal is the same. Um, if you go uh, to the next slide, please. The, we're uh, proposing a concept that is based on urban agriculture. So um, to connect the, in phase one, you collect, connect Catherine Dunham Museum and uh, House of Miles Davis through um, urban agriculture. So you create jobs, you, uh, you use um, plants and colors in such a way that it, it, it actually beautifies and it's perennial. So what exactly are we looking at there? Uh, this is uh, a, an example of uh, a close-up of one of the concepts that um, shows how you can actually, by plant, bl planting um, different types of um, uh, agricultural uh, produce, uh, you can create um, a color and, and, and a variation. So it's, it's really about, for example, sweet potato project or the sunflower project. Uh -huh. I mean, some of the people might have heard about it. Sweet um, potato was something that gentleman, I can't remember his Sylvester name. Sylvester Brown. Sylvester Brown, right. Mm, yes. In uh, North St. Louis where they actually took, uh, you know, empty lots that used to have houses on them and made sweet potato gardens. <laughs> That's right. So yeah. it's actually getting the uh, youth at risk to um, learn about entrepreneurship through this whole process of one summer planting the seeds and then harvesting and then uh, understanding how you can uh, create uh, a, pr uh, a, a marketable good out of it, which is the, for example, sweet potato cookies. You're teaching a young person a lot with, right. uh, with that. And uh, so I really have great admiration and respect for, um, that's a great example of a project. Or the uh, sunflower project, which is really about how you, um, a lot of these, um, l some of the land is brownfield, so that's another way to really um, uh, create change and, and clean these brownfields with the right type of plants. Things change uh, within the toxic. So will your proposal include um, any kind of building of new structures or not? Or is it just sort of using what's already there? For, um, it's, a, it's kind of a reasonable size vision. So the less expensive the first investment, um, the more, the faster it can happen. So the landscaping uh, concepts, which are, uh, we think it's powerful. Um, there's so much vacant land and quite a few abandoned buildings. So you can already create these pathways without a huge investment. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, if, if you could see a couple of those next slides in, um, Within the axes, um, you, you can see we've done various, there you go. 
You've done various um, uh, modelings, AutoCAD modelling, uh, looking at what you see, Route 66 and Martin Luther King um, are within these five neighbourhoods. So this is the coming down Route, route 66 and along Martin Luther King creating um, uh, a few incubators, uh, galleries and um, uh, studios for um, young talent and artists, um, it, it's one suggestion. So that's what uh, you see um, in these slides. Um, it, I don't know if you could go to the next slide. W and what's remarkable, it's, it, it's uh, exactly so. Now that's both sides of the river, isn't it? That, that is both sides of the river and it's just the slide shows that if we really uh, took this concept further, and uh, did these um, uh, galleries on MLK. This is the way that it can continue into St. Louis uh, because um, Dr. Martin Luther King is an amazing opportunity as well. Yeah, it's sort of like what they've done with the bike trails and things through the city, isn't it? Absolutely, or like the loop. It's, it's just like any other street that has its own story, its own potential uh, that has not been or, or, or is on the drawing board, East West Gateway is working on How it. How does this right affect now. the people right now that are living in St. Louis, the people who maybe have been there for 20, 30, 40, 50 years? Um, does, in, does it impact them, you know, where they live? Is it going to, does anybody have to move? <laughs> no, uh, actually um, the, the people there have long been waiting for, um, for this kind of um, um, opportunity and they're really excited. I mean, we're all working together. We have regular, uh, there, there are community partners and we're, we're meeting uh, and each time we conceptualize and have some new things on the drawing boards, we get together and they can tell us what they think about it mm -hmm. or they make suggestions and we move to the next phase. So they're very excited, just like any other client. There you go. This is, um, as I mentioned, a, a, a project um, of this magnitude takes many partners. Is up. that the Davis House? That's in front of Miles Davis House and this is with uh, our community partners and uh, a few other organizations that are working with us. Um, um, there are Harris Stowe students. The project funds uh, an artist in residence, um, uh, Edna Petty Patterson. Uh, she is just incredible. Um, she's come up with a concept for this project, which we, um, this is a two-year project. So it's based um, on, well, she, she's producing a quilt for this specific approach. A that quilt? Tells, yes, uh -huh. a quilt that tells this story. So she would be a next great guest to talk uh -huh. about this. In fact, we're going to have an exhibition of her work on uh, 2nd of December. If you come to our gallery space, you can meet her and, and talk. But in fact, the landscaping that we're proposing for this project is using the quilt idea, the uh, urban agriculture. So. It, it's is part of what you do too. I mean, do you have your eye on the cost? I mean, are you looking to do things in the, in the most inexpensive way? Is that part of the equation? Um, of course, for any architect and designer, you are trying to be. Um, you're you're aware of all the parts. Cost is an important uh, process to take into the into account. So of course, um, the, you know you can go the expensive way, you can go the most efficient way, and I think since it, it just offers itself as a good solution, there's so much land. Urban agriculture makes so much sense in view of that, you know, how much uh, the food deserts that we have, uh -huh. and it creates job, and it's beautiful, and um, it's it's uh, th the site is just perfect for this you know if you think of a cultural campus if you think of uh, forest park forever and this um, um, uh, house of miles davis and catherine journal museum are really really within walking distance if it was beautiful enough right so you picture you picture some tourists coming parking in a central location seeing the miles davis house walking through some of this uh, landscape design to the next destination point. Or ride a bike. Uh, along the way, there will be um, amphitheaters, there will be 
uh, benches, there'll be, uh, you know, space. Uh, there you go. This is one of the models that our uh, students created. Uh, so we're really, we are able to move this and look what at What does this aspect. represent? What are we looking at? This, the blue line is Dr. Martin Luther King Street. Uh, on the top is, you, you actually see the distance between Catherine Dunham Museum and House of oh, Miles Davis. Uh -huh. And um, th this is how we are really um, uh, drawing uh, solutions. Uh, the, 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 uh, this, the, the slide you saw before uses this to inform what the path should be. Where, where is vacant land, where are the empty buildings, and that's the perfect space to start the landscaping, uh, I guess, uh, story, quilt concept. So uh -huh. we're working with all those. Um, there is a, um, th th this is evolving uh, literally weekly. Uh, we just put up a website that's interactive uh, that already puts, um, shows where these cultural assets are. Uh, you can see the distance between them. And it's interactive because the community can add to it uh, as well. So the, 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 we're learning more as people put their story and uh -huh. which, there's so many memories about East St. Louis that people have that amaze me. You say that what you're doing is a two year project. How far are you into it? Uh, a, a year. One year. Mm -hmm. And so a, a year from now, what's gonna happen? Well, typically uh, the project is about uh, cultural asset mapping. But as you can see, we're so excited <laughs> we've done even more. So we hope um, by the end of that period, we leave the community. Obviously, National Endowment for the Arts is going to get a report from us. Um, and uh, the artist will present her work. Um, all of this went out as an RFP, so uh -huh. artists applied. Realistically, though, then once you're done in a year from now, how long might it take everything to come to fruition as you've envisioned it? Well, think about downtown. Think about um, the loop. Um, it it take you, you you have to plant the seed, and and the vision that people can relate to. So now the community has uh, like a, a sketchbook of what is possible, and we're creating the uh, a nonprofit for them. Well, Jasmine Albert, continue with your work. It's, Thank you. I think it's really exciting, and I can't wait to see. What happens down the road with East St. Louis and the Our Town Project? I hope people will check out your website because you're involved in a lot of other things. And yes, we do. So. 2nd of December is the opening of um, the artist in residence and her quilts, and uh, she can talk about what she's doing for the project. Thank you, Jasmine, well. so much. It's Thank been you. very interesting. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Steve Potter, and that's it for this edition of City Corner. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. See you next time. Bye.